You are looking live at Ice Line in Westchester, Pennsylvania, where the New Jersey Bandits U19 AA girls are about to take their first shot at getting a trip to Nationals. Hi everybody, it's Joe Rizzo here bringing you the action on Rizzo Vision as the Bandits will take on the Junior Flyers. These are the top two seeds in the Atlantic District playoffs. The Bandits won the early game to advance to this game. The winner of this game gets the first spot available in Nationals. The loser of this game will advance to play on Sunday afternoon and get a second chance at it. But you want to win it right here. Lexi Riley, brilliant in game one, 14 shots, 14 saves, and a 2 nothing win over the York Devils. The Junior Flyers, as the number one seed, we'll give you a look at them on the far side, in the orange with black. As the number one seed, they just need to win one game. They have two chances to win one game. If they win this one, they get a trip to Nationals. If not, then they get their shot at 5.45 on Sunday against the winner of the game between the York Devils and the Little Flyers. So that's how it all pans out. Win and you're in and you're headed to East Lansing, Michigan for Nationals the first week of April. Well, so many of you joined us for the first game. So many of you have joined us for the entire season. It's been a long road. It started just under a year ago when the Bandits growing program added the U19 level. This team came together. There were a couple of groups. There were some from the U16 team that were ready to move up and there were a bunch from the New Jersey Colonials, a couple of former Saints, a couple of former Rockets. They came together through tryouts. They played a tournament in August. One of those games was against these Junior Flyers. And they've gone all the way here. If you're still playing hockey at this point in March, boy, you're doing something right. The Bandits do the stick tap. We are going to be in this perch. We'll probably stay here for the whole game a victim of some pretty bad Wi-Fi, and this is pretty much the only spot where we could get it. So at the far end, the Bandits will shoot twice. At the near end, you'll get a good look at the handiwork of 32 Lexi Riley. Try to get to the Flyers goalie. It's either Shulden or Walker. I think that it is Fiona Walker. Getting set for the opening faceoff. Underway in the Atlantic District playoffs. Win and in. Nationals on the line. Muther will bring it in. Knocked out of the zone by Camerata. The other thing about this perch is that the camera is right in front of my sight line. So sometimes. <laughs> When I'm looking, I'm looking at the players and not the camera, and the camera blocks my vision a little bit. Centering feed in the middle, comes in on Riley, and she makes the save off of Sanders' redirection. And 29 seconds into the game, the first save of the game belongs to the Bandits. Defensive zone draw. Folia will take it with Camerata and Gabby Rothstein up front. Olivia Rothstein and Fernanda Venuto on the back line. That's how they will line up. Folia wins the draw over to Venuto, sends it off the glass. Took a funny bounce, but Gabby Rothstein was there to play it. You'll get a good look at most of this stuff. We just got to hope that the referees don't get in our way. I didn't say referee, singular. I said referees, plural. There are two referees and two linesmen for lineswomen. The referees are distinctive because of the orange stripes on both sleeves. The linesmen will call the offsides and icings and things like that. Off the draw, they'll send it to the near side. Spiker trying to get through traffic, can't do it. Perez, point to point. 
sent down low. Venuto picked it off. That was Snedeker, sent at the net, but deflected up into the netting above us. McSherry with Sperling and Scott up front. Olivia Rossi and Venuto still out on defense. Off the draw, a loose puck. Sperling got a piece of it. Comes now to Olivia Rossi looking for some room. It's knocked down by Davis. Reversed and sent toward the middle. Muther sent it to Perez at one point. Snedeker at the other. Campanile in the slot, unleashed it. Muther comes in and she scores. Liz Muther got free on the back side and shot that one in over Riley. And the Junior Flyers take a one nothing lead with 15-39 left in period number one. Off the draw, they had it. Down low, moved it through the slot. Muther got open and fired it in. Otterbein now comes out with McNulty and McCaffrey up front. Shoemaker, Gromick, and Redmond on the back line. Redmond picks it up, chips it forward for McCaffrey, who sends it down low. Campanilli and Snedeker on the assists, and they race in again. So Toole got that one knocked away, and Shoemaker Gromick was the one who did that. Goes to the far side, brought in for a moment, but knocked down. That was DePiro. McNulty got it into the neutral zone, up to the far side wall. Junior Flash try to bring it in, but McCaffrey prevents that from happening. They will get it in now, trying to come right down Broadway. Sullivan had nowhere to go. Picked up and centered in the middle, but Shoemaker Gromick batted her way. Wilder was sprinting right down the middle, sent it toward the net, but the Bandits get it out of danger. Bandits have, on the whole, not had a wonderful record in these games, but they do have a victory over the Junior Flyers, and it came in a very odd fashion, a very interesting day as that one is sent in for an icing. Bandits will have an offensive zone draw. The Bandits and Junior Flyers played a doubleheader at the Ice Vault in Wayne, New Jersey, a couple of months ago, a few months ago, more than a couple. And in the first game, the Junior Flyers put on an epic shooting display as the puck comes in and close, covered, and the whistle blows. That is Sheldon, looks like, actually, not Walker. Veronica Sheldon in the nets for the Junior Flyers. Flyers won 10-1 in the early game, and you're thinking, oh boy, what happened here? And in the second game, the Bandits, despite that 10-1 loss, came back a few hours later and won 5-2. And they, in a game that they really, it was just a very good game, not even maybe one of their best games of the season. They just played well and won the game. So we'll see if they have something in store for the Junior Flyers here. Somebody was taken down in front, no call. Comes all the way out, Kepler picks it up, looking to send it forward off the wall. Camerata left it for Folia. is gonna to try to turn the corner and does. Has Gabby Rothstein coming down the middle, but she's marked by Acosta, or rather Shaw. 89 and 99, hard to discern from all the way over here. Acosta 99, Shaw 89. Spiker gets it forward, dumps it in, and it's Try to get it out, hard off the glass. Let's see if it has a lot of juice and will be an icing, and it will. So, Junior Flyers were putting on the pressure there. They have a one nothing lead on the goal by Liz Muther early in the game. Sherry with Sperling and Scott. Scott that spun around there. That one came outside the zone. Perez brought it back in for the offside. So they moved the puck about 30 feet north of the 
previous spot and on the draw the bandits win it but it comes back into the zone and they have to now work to get it out. Sperling had done it but Luther picked it up and sent it back in. Redmond trying to outrace Campanile for it. McSherry gets to it and sends it up the boards on the far side. It gets to the point and DePiro got hung up there. Sperling's going to try to turn the corner on Muther, but Muther steps in with the hip and is able to separate Sperling from the puck. Bandits change one on D. Kepler gets out there, now out there on right defense with Fernanda Venuto. Junior Flyers try to break it up the middle. Davis had a piece, couldn't hold on, sends it back into the defensive zone. The other tough thing about being at one end of the ice is you can't really see numbers. Campanile got spun around over there. No hands up by referees, which means play on. Sent in ahead of Sanders by McSherry. Bandits will change. Otterbein and Rizzo with McCaffrey now. Shoemaker's Romick banks it off the boards for Rizzo. Trying to get through a bunch over there. Somebody dove at her back, Otterbein picks it up, shoots, oh, it's kicked away by Sholden. Rizzo got it forward, she sort of mowed down the opposition right there and let Otterbein walk into it. And that's a play that's been working for those two here. Usually it's the other way, as Riley covers that one up off the dump in. Usually it's been the other way. Otterbein's so good at carrying that puck into traffic and through traffic, takes the players with her, and sometimes the puck, but oftentimes not with the puck, so if you're trailing, it creates an opportunity. And now we've seen Rizzo do that a few times over the last few games, once this morning and once already today in this evening game. Off the draw, Otterbein tied up Sanders. It comes to the point, and it must have been kept in. Gambino was going to be the one chasing after it. Shoemaker Gromick sends it around to Kepler. The speedy O'Toole thought she had it picked off. It comes to the point, McCaffrey couldn't get it out over there. Kepler gives a shove, it's sent down. I think this will not be an icing because it's gonna go on net and they play it. Hogan sends it for Gambino. Gambino retreats under pressure of Otterbein, lifts it to try to get it out and does. Rizzo was hoping to bat that one down before it got in the air, but Hogan made a good play to get it elevated quickly. Junior Flyers try to break out and they get it into neutral ice, but Kepler rebuffs it, looking for Rizzo on the far side. Might be at the end of the shift as Otterbein and McCaffrey change. So Rizzo at the end of it will head over toward the bench as soon as she can get there. She's out of picture and is forced to kind of play the puck, sends it forward for Folia, peels away, and Gabby Rothstein jumps on. So they complete the change, Folia and Camarada with Gabby Rothstein. Gabby got it going in the early game with an early goal. She'd like to get one back right here as the Bandits trail 1-0 as we approach the 10 minute mark of time remaining in the first period. Junior Flyers playing a little fast and loose with the puck here and sent it right through Sheldon's crease. Bandits send it in offside. Boy, the quality of refereeing, not just the quantity, is evident. These refs all are fast and quick on the calls. Emphatic, even no doubt. And the first game seemed to be refereed pretty well, so no complaints here. No complaints when they're adding the extra referees. If you're playing to St. Patrick's Day, which the Bandits are guaranteed to be, no matter the outcome of this game, they'll still have more games, at least one more game after this, then boy, you've really done something right to get this far. Spiker sends it up the middle for Shaw, picked off. Scott has a lot of traffic over there. Shaw spun herself down and Scott was able to keep it moving forward but couldn't get the dump in. Spiker will try to get it into the offensive zone and does, hits the brakes, sends it to the point and they play high-low. It comes below the end line for Olivia Rothstein. There we get a good look at 22. You're gonna get some, pops it into the bench. Uh, let's see if anybody caught that. No, it was nearest Tim Kepler, uh, but he didn't have a chance to make the catch, so. We'll forgive Tim a little bit. There is netting right above me 
but one pane of glass over, there's no netting. So if a puck does ricochet off the wall, I guarantee that I will catch it. Off the draw, Rizzo had it out for a moment. Sent to the far side, looking for McNulty. Teed up, shot, saved by Riley. And catches it in the Bandit's logo in her belly. And uses the glove to prevent the rebound from hitting the ice. Otterbein with McNulty and Rizzo now. So there's a shot, a nice reach by Riley. She reached forward with the catching glove to get it before it could deflect off of Davis. And it will change the line here. So it looks like Otterbein is centering with a rotation on wing of McCaffrey, McNulty, and Rizzo as the third line and five defense. We'll see if at some point they switch McCaffrey to defense and go with three pair rather than rotating five. Here's Camarada now up with Fogia and Gabby Rothstein. Here comes Muther again, the goal scorer. Shit sits it to the far side for Campanile, but the Bandits grab it, turn it, and hustle the other way. Fogia comes in, tries to get through the middle, still has it, still had it, but was caught from behind there and it comes toward the point, batted up by a couple of gloves, but inside the defensive zone, that's not gonna be an issue. Puck is on its end, they say no icing, and because of the rolling puck, it never got there. Chipped forward, Camarada couldn't get it, now regains it. There's a, O'Toole just upended Gabby Rothstein coming over the line, and it just looked like a pretty, Blatant interference call, they didn't call it. There's a stick that gets high, and they're gonna call that one. McSherry got sticked in the head, and it should be the Bandits' first power play here. McSherry took a stick right to the head, and apparently that's not the call. McSherry took a stick right to the back of the head, and apparently she's the one that's gone into the box. So I, I, I will disagree with that call. I'm not sure what they were seeing there. I think interference was the call. But even if there's interference, that doesn't give you the right to get your stick onto someone's helmet. So at least even it up, maybe. But two refs, two linesmen. And Sherry in the box for two minutes, and she's... Well, they call a body check on McSherry. Okay, yeah. There you go. Spiker comes in, looking for room, sends it wide. Comes to Shaw on the far wall, now at the point for Campanile, looking for somebody. Reverses it back, Shaw tees it up. It was blocked by Olivia Rothstein. Folia gets it, got hooked from behind. Acosta now goes to the point for Snedeker. Over to Campanile, right through the legs there. They just work it around and around and around. Shot, Riley saved it. Rothstein maybe got away with one there, shoving somebody in. And oh, Acosta with the elbow on the goalie. They didn't see that one. We got a good look at it, though. Camarada will bring it out. 6.41 remaining. Period one, 58 seconds on the penalty kill for the Bandits who trail 1-0. Near side wall, it comes out to Olivia Rothstein. Bandits will take this, take their time. Rothstein sends it hard right through Camarada's wickets. Gabby Rothstein gets it and sends it down now. Rothstein dumped it to herself and the Junior Flyers just weren't paying attention. She just hustled, picked it up, got it back, sends it at the net, but didn't get all the way through traffic there. And that serves to kill off another half a minute effectively. Moved forward by Scott. Kepler comes in, gets it to center ice, and fires it right back down. Gabby Rothstein on her horse, trying to forecheck it out there. Venuto changes in for Kepler. Scott retreats over to Shoemaker Gromick. Now for Venuto, sends it across ice. This is going to be an icing. Oh, that one hurt right there. Because with three seconds left on the penalty kill, the Bandits will have a defensive zone draw. At which point, McSherry will exit the box and 
probably go right into the play, considering Scott and Sperling are out there, and those are typically the wings that me and McSherry's been playing with. Penalty's over, McSherry gets out of the box, comes in from behind, shot comes all the way through, Riley covered it up. Long whistle there, she was moving the puck, but the whistle blew. So the Bandits with the penalty kill have gotten it back to full and even strength. Sherry will stay out there with Sperling and now McCaffrey. Redmond and Venuto on defense. Sperling gets it out of the zone, but Kogan retreats to pick it up. 524 left, period number one. Win and in. This one's sent down. Looks like it will be an icing. But that is the call. Win and you're in. See some jumping in on the comments. We have our Bandits families and our Junior Flyers families as well. All are welcome here on Rizzo Vision. We're glad to bring it to you. These girls are wearing different jerseys and they're battling it out hard for the chip. That one touched somebody on the Junior Flyers bench, so the backside referee says, out of play, we'll do it again. Doesn't matter where you're from, the sorority of girls hockey players. And at U19, it's still considered youth hockey. It is a rare and exclusive sorority. The hardest sport, we all know it. And we admire our girls for playing it, doing so, so well to get this far. That being said, everybody wants to win. <laughs> That's what they're trying to do right now. Junior Flyers up 1-0. 4.38 left period. Number one from Ice Line in Westchester, PA. Bandits won their early game against the York Devils to get themselves their first shot at a berth in the Nationals. Junior Flyers is the number one seed. This is their first game. For either team, one will win and be in. The other will lose, and here's Rizzo coming in, sends it forward for McSherry as they're caught in a change. McSherry's shot didn't get all the way through. Redmond changes off for Kepler. Rizzo's in front, was unmarked for a second, but no bandit had the puck there. The loser will get another shot Sunday at 5.45 against the winner of the game between the York Devils and the Little Flyers. It's double elimination, four teams, and two spots available. Otterbein with now Rizzo and McNulty up front. Shoemaker, Gromick, and Kepler on the back line. Shots on goal, 5-2 according to the shot clock in favor of the Flyers. Shoemaker, Gromick held the point there and Otterbein got it out. Sanders. Makes Otterbein hit the brakes. It comes down low. Gambino centered it. She had somebody over there. Rizzo gets to it first. Sanders gets the stick up. Rizzo trying to push her off. Rizzo gets hit from behind by O'Toole. O'Toole picks it up. Rizzo gets up gingerly, hustles back in, forces the play to the outside. Shot was blocked. It comes all the way over to the opposite side. O'Toole getting the butt end of the stick up. Boy, she's playing fast and loose over there. The two referees will see how much they're going to let go. So far, they're letting go of a fair amount as the girls play on. Centered in the middle, looking for some room is Kogan. Centering feed knocked away by Otterbein. Kepler picks it up. Now it's taken away over there. Centering feed, one shot. Riley with the big save, got the shoulder on it. I think it was Sanders that got in the middle, blistering shot. McNulty forwards for Rizzo. A little too strong, Rizzo heads at the net to force the face off and the Bandits get the whistle and they will make a change. Big save by Riley to keep it within one, one nothing. 2.39 left in period one. Shots now 7-3 for the Flyers, Jimmy Flyers. Off the draw, Folia is on the dot there and spun it and turned it at the net. 
Olivia Rothstein knocked it down with the body. And I think maybe that the linesman said it hit one of the junior flyers hanging over the bench there. So they're going to keep the face off in that zone. Folia off the draw, tries to get it through the middle, couldn't do it. Venuto picks it up, has to wait for the onside, sends it back to Olivia Rothstein. Now far side for Camerata. Nifty play working off the boards there and dumps it across for Gabby Rothstein, but a little bit too far. Up the far side. The Flyers try to get it in, but rebuffed by Venuto. Comes in, pops up high. Venuto picks it up, moves it forward, but offside. Venuto gloved it down and moved the puck forward, but it hit the bottom of her torso, and she just couldn't stop that puck from moving, so kind of forced the offside. Two minutes exactly remaining in period one. There will be an ice cut. I'm not sure which period it will be between, but at that time, we'll uh, let you look at the ice and we'll mute the mics unless we somehow have a between periods guest, uh, which hasn't happened as of yet. That one bounces in on Riley, sticks it down, plays it for Venuto. Reversed now. Here's Spiker going to pick it up, send it to the point. Pressured there by Gabby Rothstein, kept in, sent through traffic, redirected and knocked down and covered by Riley. Perez got it from the point, got the shot through traffic, took a little something off, made a nifty move at the point to keep it in and get out of traffic. Got it down low, Riley got the stick on it, the puck popped up and she covered it before any further ensuement of play. McSherry with Scott, up front, along with Sperling. Comes to the far side wing, kept in at the point. From here it looked like maybe it was out. Redmond moves it forward, bandits tic-tac-toe it out of the zone. Perez back into her own end, plays it D to D. Junior Flyers move it up, Scott picks it off. Wanted to send it forward, but was pressured from behind by Shaw. Shaw dumps it, peels off for a change. Spiker will stay up and be the one in pursuit. Bandits bang it in and out. Here comes Campanile. Nice pass back and forth. Campanile back and forth. Shot and score. Luther again on the give and go and give and go with Campanile makes it 2 0 Junior Flyers with 40.3 seconds left in the first period. Sometimes teams just make a great play. Campanile is a brilliant passer, 18, and she is a pass first player. She did the first meeting between these two teams way back in August. She had a hat trick and a three nothing win, but she's a pass first player and a creative player and just going back and forth with Muther there, they got open space and found their way in. So on their 10th shot, they make it two nothing. Uh, Campanile, the assist, Muther, the goal. 2 nothing Junior Flyers, and those goals at the end of periods really, really hurt you. Psychologically, and for the ob other obvious reasons. Dumped through the zone, sent down through the legs. I mean, Kepler sent it right through the legs of Kogan right there, and they say icing. So. Eight point seven seconds left in the period. Foldia with Olivia Rothstein and Camerata up front off the draw. Junior Flyers trying to get it through. Camerata trying to get a break. It comes in. Riley lets it go aside. The period expires. And the Bandits will head into period number two with a 2-0 deficit. And by the looks of it, let's see if this is the period where they will cut the ice. It is not. Win and you are in. Trip to Nationals at stake. East Lansing, Michigan. That's where Michigan State University is. That's where Nationals will be held the first week of April, not on April Fool's Day, but I think they start the games on April 3rd, 
a Wednesday, and if you're lucky enough to play all the way through Sunday, that could be when the finals would be. The Nationals, try to give you a little better look at the Bandits here. And on April 8th, a Monday, the exceedingly rare scientific event of a total solar eclipse will be happening between points here and East Lansing, Michigan. So all through most of Ohio and up into northeastern Pennsylvania, about the area of Erie for our geographists, there will be a total solar eclipse in about the 2 to 3 o'clock into maybe the 4 o'clock hour on April 8th, a Monday. So if some of us are fortunate enough to be planning a trip to Michigan at that time, then some of us are also planning to come home on the Monday so we could drive through the total solar eclipse. The next one uh, in the United States will not be until August 12th, 2044. Sheldon now guards the net. I'm going to say to your YouTube right, but it's pretty much the one right in front of us. And Lexi Riley goes all the way to the other end. So you'll get a good look at the Bandits offensively here. Down two to nothing. Shots on goal 10-3 through one period in favor of the Junior Flyers. Off the draw, Bandits will bring it in. Camarada powers it down. Forces Chandler to bring it back. Chandler to Hogan, up now through the middle. Muther has a couple of goals, both with the first assist from Campanile. And the first goal, Hogan got the second assist, I believe it was. Comes through, Camarada's gonna have a chance to race this down. Hogan had the lane and the line, gets there. Hits the brakes, reverses it, sends it for Chandler. Hit off Gabby Rothstein's stick, picked up by Folia. is gonna try to turn the corner. Marches right in, shoots, big save, rebound loose, still loose, it comes to the far side. Big chance for the Bandits there, that's probably their best. shoemaker Groma kept it in at the point. Folia comes in, marches down the middle, gets one shot off. Maybe it didn't get through all the way. Sheldon had the stick paddle reversed. I don't think it got all the way through. Bandits have come out here with some force in the first minute five of period two. Shaw will bring it in. Shaw will look to get it to the middle, gets it down there. Shot comes in and Riley keeps the catching glove along the ice and makes a stop. Camarada looked like she might have been limping a little bit coming to the bench there. Sort of a, a limp, but not one that seemed to be under duress, if that makes any sense. So wondering if that was just something with the equipment. Centering feed by Spiker, and Redmond picks it up. Redmond looking for somebody up the middle. Didn't find it. Gets checked right there, and they don't call that one. They call that sort of questionable check on McSherry before. That one looked much worse than anything McSherry did. And of course, I might be biased and I might not have a better view than the two refs. Centered in front and they score. Kira Shaw got it from the corner and smacked it in from the top of the slot. And the Junior Flyers move out to a 3-0 lead. Things not going the Bandits' way so far, but the good news for them is there's 15.09 left in the second period. A long, long way to go, but the hill becomes a little higher to climb. So Muther with a couple, and now Shaw. We'll get that confirmed because they are announcing the goals here at the Atlantic District playoffs. Off the draw, it's now Otterbein with McCaffrey and Rizzo up front. Shoemaker Gromick back on D. Off the boards, Rizzo trying to get there before Chandler. She was a step short. Chandler dumps it in. So Bella Acosta with the assist on Kira Shaw's goal. 
Makes it three, nothing for the Junior Flyers. Muther comes in, centers it in the middle. Perez comes all the way down there. Now came for Rizzo, just out of her reach there. Got a piece of it. Rizzo just picks up Chandler's miss. Davis moves it forward, but Rizzo got a piece of it. Shoemaker Gromick sends it across. Here comes McCaffrey, chips it forward, has Rizzo with her. McCaffrey down the middle, tried to get it to Rizzo, but Chandler got a skate on it. She didn't know she got a skate on it, but she did. Otherwise, McCaffrey was going to feed Rizzo right down Broadway. Campanile picks it up, turns, who's giving it to DePiro for a one-timer. Goes off the end boards. Ricochet is back, and Riley covers it up. Vandals will change, 13.58 left, period number two. They trail 3-0. Off the draw, comes right back to Riley and she springs forward with the dexterity of a lizard to cover that one up. Thirteen fifty-five left period two. And it's need to get one here. Junior Flyers have a three nothing lead. Shot goes off the outside of the net. Riley got a piece of it first with the blocker arm. Trying to get it to neutralize. Gabby Rothstein's going to race into this one. Picks it up, tries to get through the middle, gets it down low. Backhander goes just wide. Kogan picked it up at the post. It wasn't going in, but it was awful close, and Kogan made sure that nobody else was there for the Bandits. Flyers try to rush in, but it's an offside. 13-18 left period, number two. Three-nothing junior Flyers. Win and in. The Nationals at East Lansing, Michigan. But, fear not, if it doesn't go your way this evening, then you get another chance tomorrow at 5.45. St. Patrick's Day. DePiro just tying up Camerata there. Murata was rushing toward the middle, but Wildish raced back to get it. Here's Gabby Rothstein, flips it up in the air. Bouncing puck fielded by Sheldon, making it a little easier for Perez to get it. Comes to the point, Olivia Rothstein fires it, and Sheldon kneels out and slides forward to grab that puck. I don't think it was going in, but she clutched it anyway. Bandits will... Change it up here. McSherry with McCaffrey and Sperling up front. Venuto and Redmond on defense. Let's see if the Bandits can get something going here. 12.42 left, period number two. They trail 3-0. It comes just north of McSherry, sends it for Redmond. Redmond gets it on net, redirected in front. Saved by Sheldon, rebound covered. Bandits with some good chances here, but they have yet to convert. The Hall of Fame football coach Bill Parcells always said, get the zero off the board. Get the zero off the board. So if the Bandits are listening to Coach Parcells, they're not worried about three goals, they're worried about one. Just get one. Junior Flyers get it out, send it down. Retreating now. Oh, the Bandits using an edge over there. I think that was Spiker, but she still got a piece of it. Bandits are going to chip it out of the zone. Chandler will come toward the point, wait for her team to get on side and send it in. Shaw, who just had the goal to make it 3 0, sends it back down low. McCaffrey now on the far side wing, looking for some room. Gets it out of the zone, pounded there, gets slammed into the boards. That's a body check. And the Bandits are going to have their first power play of the game. McCaffrey drew the body check as she was getting up the boards on the left side. And the Bandits will operate on the power play for the first time, and it is a big one. 11.52 left, second period, they trail 3-0. Should be an offensive zone draw here because of the penalty to the Junior Flyers. Bandits are gonna not 
do anything different in terms of the alignment of the power play. They're going to play Folia up front on the dot with Camerata in the slot. Off the draw, Folia moved it forward, but Sheldon got a piece of it. Big power play for the Bandits here. Camerata goes between the points for Shoemaker Gromick. Shoemaker Gromick, two traffic redirected, and it goes wide. Gabby Rothstein with it, looking, looking, trying to find somebody open. Didn't want to go to the point. Gets, gets hit from behind there, was screaming for the penalty. No icing as that one goes on net. She got shouldered from behind. She had a good case, but the refs are definitely letting go more of the physical contact. That's why, in a way, I was kind of surprised when there was a body check. Down low, shot by Shaw, short-handed, and she just fired it over the net. Bandits will try to break out here now. Folia will bring it in. Tee it up, shoots it over the net. Rebound comes and knocked away by Colgan. Colgan with a baseball slash on Folia, no call. Ref looking right at it, letting him play. Shot. By Camerata, Sheldon kicks it away. The, the wax on the shin pads, they'll usually let those go away, get away. But the ones when they, when they get up by the hands, usually they'll call that one. If you bang down on the stick, they'll call that a slash. But that one was real close. The Bandits could have had a five on three. Four. Five on four for the next 30 seconds, 10.20 left in period two. Bandits could really use one here. Sometimes we talk about how the key point in the game, as the offside is called, as Snedeker was sending it in, sometimes the key point in a game, I'm gonna call that the intentional offside, or maybe icing. The key point in a game might not be at the very end. The key opportunity might come well before that. Sherry on the dot, McCaffrey in the slot, Sperling on the near side wing, Venuto and Olivia Rothstein at the points. Just below us, Sperling gets close, had a chance to come in front of the net, but went behind. Now going all the way around the world, looking to tee it up. Gets it through, saved by Sheldon, she might have got the mask on it. McSherry got a piece, Campanile tries to move it out, but it's kept in by Olivia Rothstein, shoveled forward with the backhand, the penalty expires. So the Junior Flyers killed it off, but the Bandits got some good chances there, especially the redirection. Sherry with McCaffrey and Sperling up front. Olivia Rothstein at the left point, Fernanda Venuto between the points. Kenna Sanders on the draw. Comes to the near side for DePiro, sends it down. It's gonna be an icing. Unless that puck dies on its end, but it does not. So the Bandits have gotten the shots to within 12-11 here, but they trail 3-0. Sherry on the dot, McCaffrey in the slot, Sperling on the near side wing. It comes to the point. Venuto walks the line. Venuto through traffic, redirected in front, and it goes over the height of the crossbar. Sperling with it, looking for somebody, looking for something. Spins it around. McCaffrey tied up by DePiro. He just had a bear hug on her, practically. And McCaffrey was trying to get loose like Christian McCaffrey, trying to get loose from a linebacker there. There's a trip that's going to be called against Venuto, and that's an unfortunate one for the Bandits, but one that will happen. So the Bandits can't convert on their power play. Now they will be shorthanded as Venuto will go to the box for the trip. 9-11 left, period number two. They trail 3-0. A trip to Nationals is on the line for the winner. The loser, however, should not lose faith because they will have a second chance at it Sunday at 545 against either the York Devils or the Little Flyers. Folia might have a shorthanded break here. She's got Kogan to beat. Folia tries to turn the corner. Wildish came back for support. Folia just ran out of room there. Bandits are going to need to do something. The first thing they could worry about here is killing off a penalty as Riley covers that loose puck up. The first thing they could worry about is killing this penalty. 
but sometimes even on the penalty kill, that's where you can find an offensive opportunity. Comes to the point, Kogan looking for somebody. One of the bandits might have gotten away with him. Backside shot, Muther, save, rebound, still loose, covered up. And one of the junior flyers was pushing forward, wildish. And it's good job there not to react to it and take another penalty. Wildish was right in on top of Riley, the goaltender. Bandits will change all four. McSherry and Scott up front. Off the draw, comes right at Riley, and she covers it up. Wildish is right there, rushing right at the net. Off the draw, it's gonna to come to the point. They go between the points. Chandler back and forth with Kogan, can't handle it, but they get it down the middle, tic-tac-toe. Scott blocked it away. Chandler takes it from Kogan, reverses it now to the far side as they just, they'll just zig and zag with their passes. There's the zig, here comes the zag, and the bandits will knock it away. And sometimes if that does, there's a shot. Riley might have gotten a piece of it, hard to see from all the way down here. Chandler picks it up, gloved it to herself, centering feed for Wildish, couldn't get the redirection. Chipped up toward the point, Sanders walks it in. Exchanges at the boards on the far side with Kogan. Kogan looking for somebody in the middle. Junior Flyers have 27 seconds left on the power play. A 3-0 lead and a 15-11 advantage in shots with 7.30 left in the second period. It's gone their way so far. The Bandits have had some opportunities, but they haven't been able to cash them in. Getting it down low. Shot and a glove save by Riley. Stops play with 7.19 left in the second period. Nine seconds left on the penalty kill, so they'll put Folia and Camerata out there up front. When Venuto comes off, Fernando will probably jump right to the bench and I'd expect to see Gabby Rothstein jump off the bench. Long clock start there. Junior Flyers got an extra second on the power play. <laughs> and a home cooking. Shaw gets it out front. Shot, big save by Riley. Here comes Gabby Rothstein. And if that puck had just sat down for Folia, she might have been able to fire it. It's loose in front. Knocked by Riley, but knocked in by the Junior Flyers, and it's 4 nothing. 6.59 left in period number two. Goal, mouth, scramble goes their way, and everything's going their way today. It was loose in front. Riley dove across the crease. But I think it was Kira Shaw again getting the stick on it and putting it in. The shots are just 16-11, but four have found their way in for the Junior Flyers. We'll hear the goal announcement here in a second, but I think it was... Kira Shaw from Bella Acosta. Maybe Gracie Spiker was in there too. Let's go, Got to find the puck. Yeah, Bandits now. The hill is starting to grow into a mountain. Redman moves it up forward for Folia. Camerata sends it down there. You never know. You keep playing because these games are one at a time. So it is Kira Shaw from Gracie Spiker on the goal. So two for Muther, then two for Spiker. Two for Muther in the first, two for Spiker in the second. Neutral ice. Perez trying to get through traffic does on her edges. Tries to get through Camerata, does, but then loses it eventually. 
couple of players ran into one another, Camarada and DePiro. Shot comes in and they're going to call something on the Bandits because Sheldon was about to sprint out of the goal here. Let's we'll see what that was. It didn't look like anything unseemly, but Camarada was going to the box. Call interference, it looks like, on Izzy Camarada. So it's 6.07 left in period number two, and the Bandits trailing 4-0. They'll have another penalty to kill off. They've yielded only at even strength. So we'll see how this goes. Junior Flyers start to work that puck around. They'll zig it and they'll zag it. First now below the end line here, off Passes from the points. McSherry will pick that one up. Send it to the middle. It's going to go just wide. And it's going to be an icing. McCaffrey and Scott will jump in for a penalty killing shift up front. Shipped out, up but not out. Chandler now back to the corner. Chandler now gets it back on top. Kogan sends it right across for the streaking Sanders. Didn't connect. Bandits pick it up. They're going to have to look for offense here at every possible play. Scott's going to bring it in short-handed. Gets it down low. Chandler reverses it. Even sh sometimes short-handed, you could actually find more opportunity and Scott draws the offensive zone face off with 59 seconds left in the penalty to Camerata. Folia will jump on along with McSherry and Scott and McCaffrey will head off. Kepler between the points, Olivia Rothstein at the left point. Folia will take the draw. McSherry will stay back. It's won by Shaw. Campanelli fights for it over there with Folia. Shaw will eventually dig it out. Bank it hard off the boards. Kepler's going to try to jump in, but Acosta chipped it through her legs. And here comes Spiker sending it up the middle. But Shaw picks it up, shoots, it hits somebody in front. Acosta tries to pound it in. Riley leans forward, couldn't cover it, and the puck jumps out. Comes to the near side wall. Campanile picks it up at the point. Now play catch. Campanile's going to dish it for Shaw. Back to Campanile. Campanile passes it off the wall to herself and then eventually dumps it down low. Eight seconds on the power play. Junior Flyers up 4-0 with 4-10 left, and the puck goes out of play. Two seconds still on the power play, and that hurts the Bandits because it's an offensive zone draw for the Junior Flyers. So even if Camarada races out of the box, if the Junior Flyers win the draw, they could quickly set up for one more offensive chance with the man advantage. Man advantage, man power advantage. You can Use your words as you like. Off the draw, Redmond ties up Wildish. Here comes Camarada, and the Bandits have killed it off. It comes to the middle of the ice. Camarada puts Perez under pressure. Camarada trying to get it away from Perez. Perez held on just enough. There was a sub job there by Wildish, almost a knee to knee. Centering feed. Venuto was trying to soccer it away. Comes to the point, Perez had it bounce over her stick. Foley is going to try to chase it down. Takiro will send it right up the middle, a pizza, but no pizza eaters for the Bandits to jump in on it. Foley knocks that one away. He's going to have to try to bust through a pair. Foley gets it picked from behind by Perez, bumps Perez and loses the puck. Shapiro off of Sanders stick. Sullivan will move it up 
and get it out. 3.06 remaining, period number two. Bandage trail as that one comes in on Sheldon, who plays it. Rizzo hustling in, just trying to steal it away. Sanders shovels it forward for O'Toole. Otterbein puts the pressure on Camarada. Bumped O'Toole, and I think it's an offside as the puck jumped out of the zone. O'Toole and Camarada ran into each other there, and O'Toole looks like she got the worst of it. On the, uh, on the offside, stops play. Otterbein with Rizzo and McNulty now. Haven't seen that crew out here for a little while. As some of the lines have been mixed up with the power plays and the penalty killing. We'll see if they're the ones with the fresh legs. Rizzo off the draw, sent it in, but Kogan picked it up. Rizzo nearly picks it off from Kogan, who sent it up the middle. O'Toole, none the worse for wear. Stays out there, moved it forward. Shoemaker Gromick gets checked into the boards. They're not going to call that one. Shoemaker Gromick still down, getting up gingerly. McNulty trying to get it out. Boy, they're getting away with an awful lot out there. But again, two refs, two linesmen. Chipped off the boards. Otterbein trying to get Rizzo in stride. Rizzo didn't have anywhere to go with it, shoveled it forward. Chandler works it around for Sanders. Sanders gets it to the middle, kicked away by the right pad off the offering by Sanders did Riley. Rizzo tries to chip it forward to herself, does that, gains the line of center and dumps it in. Bandits will be able to com complete a nice clean change now. McCaffrey fresh, Sperling fresh. Otterbein still out there, but it hasn't been such a long shift and she's pretty well rested, so Ava looks like she's still got some legs. 145 left, period number two. Bandits trail 4 0. It's a win and in, but it's so far not looking so good. If the Junior Flyers keep playing the way they're playing, it's going to make it awfully hard for the Bandits to recover, but that's why they play the games. So you get one goal, and then you worry about all the rest of the play. Centering feed. Perez didn't want to shoot it, sent it for a shot from the point by Snedeker. It's sent out, this is gonna be an icing. And the Bandits, I think they will be changing at least a couple. And Sherry now jumps out with Sperling and McCaffrey. One fifteen remaining, period two. 4-0, Bandage Trail, the Junior Flyers. Off the draw, they come in and score. I think it was Shaw again. If it was, we'll see. It's Kira Shaw, that's a natural hat trick for Shaw. Muther got two, Shaw now with three, all here in the second period and it's not, well, this part of the day is not the Bandit's Day, folks, but barring an absolute explosion coupled with a mega meltdown, they'll be playing on Sunday afternoon late against the York Devils or the Little Flyers for their spot at Nationals because this one is all but sewn up here with one minute to play in the third period by the Junior Flyers. Shots are 22-13 now. The Bandits had gotten within 12-11 at one point earlier in the period. And a little too much puck movement. And the Bandits have uh, not been nearly as good defensively here as they were in the early game. A shutout in which they didn't even allow a shot in the third period. Off the draw, Venuto bangs it off the boards, looking for Gabby Rothstein. Here comes Gabby up the left wing. Rothstein looking to hit the brakes and does. Hits the brakes again. Spiker over there. Shaw with a, a knee to knee. Oh boy. I mean, that's a, that is a dangerous play. She just took her knee and went right to the knee. Everybody's okay. But in the NHL, I mean, they probably review that one. Oh boy, you don't like to see that at all. Especially a player, she's got a natural hat trick in the game. What the heck is she doing there? Bandits have a power play and if there's any 
chance in America to get back in this game. It starts right now. Riley stays in the net. And there's no six on four yet. 31 seconds left in the second period. Five nothing, Junior Flyers. Tapiro pops that one up and out. Offensive zone draw, Fulvia on the dot, Gabby Rothstein in the slot, Izzy Camerata on the near side wing. Sperling lines up between the points, there you see Jesse to the left of the ref on your screen. The hero picks it up, looking for some room, tries to move it forward, Camerata centered it, Gabby Rothstein whacked at it. Fulvia looking to pick it up. Sent through the middle. No connection. Now the period expires. And I think this is going to be the long break here with the ice cut as the teams head across the ice. So 17 minutes to play. Bandits with a five goal deficit. Five nothing. I'll give you a look at them as they head off the ice and then I'll put it on the scoreboard between periods here. Set a timer for about 10 minutes and we'll catch you back then. We'll mute the mics at some point. 22-13 the shots in favor of the Junior Flyers through two. Five nothing.
Well, the teams have repatriated the ice for period number three, five nothing junior flyers, which not makes it not looking good for these 19U bandits, at least for this game. But good news from one of the other rinks where the 16U AA Bandits have beaten the Junior Flyers and clinched their spot in Nationals, a 3-2 victory. So congratulations to our fine 16U team that has clinched their spot in East Lansing, Michigan in the first week of April. It doesn't look like it's gonna go that way for the Bandits, at least not today, but should this score hold up, Bandits will get another shot at it. Saturday, Sunday afternoon at 5.45 from Ice Line against either the York Devils or the Little Flyers. Underway, period number three. Bandits have a power play for another minute 20 as Kira Shaw is in the box after her natural hat trick in the second. Campanile tries to shake off Shoemaker Gromick, comes down the middle for Luther, shot goes wide, bounces in front. There's a, the ice is very wet here after the resurfacing. Picked up by Folia, looking for somebody. Leaves it for Shoemaker Gromick, sent it up the middle, batted down by Luther. Now Shoemaker Gromick blocks the shot. Kepler picks it up, backhands it toward Gabby Rothstein's side. Gabby picks it up and gets on the move up the left wing. Hounded by Campanile behind her, 18 against 18. Rothstein gains the offensive zone line, gets it in, still in. Deeks around another, gets down low, tries to stuff it in front, shot, and no reaction, so no goal, I guess. Sholden made the save. I heard some yelling, I didn't see any hands go up or Referees point to the net, so Sheldon made the save. Uh, one woman show effort there by Gabby Rothstein. Off the draw from McSherry, she sends it just wide. Even if the Bandits don't come all the way back with the miracle comeback, there's still plenty to play for here in the third period. Pasta misfired on that one. Picked up by Shoemaker Gromick. Banked off the boards for Folia. Spiker got a piece of it. Shoemaker Gromick sends it right through the legs of Shaw, but Acosta picks it up, carries it in offside. Still playing it there after the whistle, and then the linesman's second whistle, more emphatic. 23-14, the shots in favor of the Junior Flyers. 15-22 remaining, period three. McSherry with McCaffrey and Sperling up front. Sperling brings it into the offensive zone, trying to turn the corner over there. Got it down low for a moment. Venuto sprints in from the point and pops it back down into the corner. Centering feed, backhand shot. I think it was McCaffrey, but Sheldon on the save. There were two in front there as the Junior Flyers had a rare breakdown. They've done basically everything right. Long pass by Venuto, hits the skate of Sperling. Jesse tries to gather it, picks it up, sends it back down low off the boards on the far side. Comes toward the point and all the way down for the icing. You can just see the difference when the ice has been resurfaced, the way that the puck just flies with Little to no resistance. By the end of the second period, that puck might not have even made it all the way over the end line. Off the draw. It's down below the end boards there. McNulty battles for it in the corner on the far side. McNulty with Otterbein and Scott up front. Comes into the defensive zone. Olivia Rothstein races after it, and it is icing. The puck was nearly caught by a slew of players, so it wasn't the usual look of icing. Folia jumps out with Camarada and Gabby Rothstein. Off 
the draw. Folia tries to power forward. Camarada got it in, all the way into the slot, but eventually when she released the shot, it was blocked. Dumped in. Riley's going to cover it up and force the face off. 14.03 remaining period three. Five nothing junior flyers. They're 14 minutes, three seconds away from earning their trip to Nationals. Off the draw, Shoemaker Gromick tied up the player that was on her, O'Toole. Centering feed, Riley let it go through because Camarada was there, but it only comes to the point. Shoemaker Gromick knocks down the shot, sends it forward for Gabby Rothstein, but kept in by Kogan, who fires a shot. Riley steered it aside awkwardly, but not much of a threat. Now picked up and brought in, but poked out by Shoemaker Gromick against Sanders. Gabby Rothstein coming in, trying to dipsy doodle, sends it at the net, but it was going just wide. And it was sticked away by Sheldon. 13-28 left period three, five nothing junior flyers. Not the second half of the day that the Bandits were hoping for. Muther with two in the first, Shaw with three in the second. That's where we stand. Puck rolling along the end boards. Shoemaker Gromick reverses it for Redmond, sends it up for Camarada. McCaffrey jumps out, Olivia Rothstein jumps out, and it's our one defenseman short. Kepler jumps out, Sperling and McSherry now out there. Campanile waits, turns, looks, banks it off the boards. Olivia Rothstein kicked it forward. Kicking totally legal, except if you use your kick to propel a puck into the net. Well, that's the only time it's not allowed. Or right, kicking a puck, I should say. You can't kick another plate. That's never allowed. Junior Flyers bring it in offside as Kristen Davis couldn't hit the brakes quickly enough. So how is it going to pan out from here? Again, barring the absolute miracle of the 21st century. Possible, but unlikely. The Bandits will await the winner of the game Sunday morning between the Junior Fly, the Little Flyers and the York Devils. The Bandits beat York this morning to get into this game. Rizzo jumps on, Otterbein jumps on, Sperling's still out there, Campanile hits the brakes, Rizzo's going to pick that one up, smack it off the board, trying to get it to herself, and it's got to take some chances here at some point, Rizzo got a piece of Campanile, but Campanile got the puck, Sperling comes, uh, Kepler comes away, sweeps it away from her, two junior flyers pursue below the end line, the ref got that one caught in his skates, does it work the way for the Bandits? And that's little to no surprise as they've not had anything working for them in this game today. Tonight, the morning game, they had enough working. And what they didn't have working, they made work. Shaw comes down the middle. Otterbein picked her off. Sperling moves it out, but it's sent back in. Olivia Rothstein picks it up, tries to ice it, hits Rizzo in the head with the clearing pass, but it serves as a pass to Otterbein. Sent back down in. Kepler's going to pick it up. Scott now comes out, Foley's out. Rizzo looking to get the long pass, does, even though she was spun around the wrong way. And now Spiker gets it in neutral ice, brought in by the junior flyers. Wildest trying to get through. Venuto poked it away with the long reach. Scott left it for Rizzo. Rizzo will gain the line of center and cross dump it. Just got it past Perez. Perez recovered. Bandits change cleanly. The player was giving herself up there and the player replacing her did not come too early. So no penalty there. Scott sends it forward. Comes back down low. Redmond will come to pick it up. There's here and then the 71. Reverses it for Venuto. And Kicked it forward. Scott tries to smack it out, but the junior flyers have just been standing there waiting for those all game. And that's why they keep pounding these pucks in. Wildish will try to send it to the point. Gabby Rustin was looking to pick the point, the point pass off, but it was sent back down below. 
Venuto up for Gabby Rothstein. Perez kept it in nicely. Brudertes takes a shot. Riley with the save. Rebound didn't get all the way through. Venuto picks it up at the point and was able to shepherd it out. Trying to take some chances is Fernanda. And they just absolutely have to do it. Just hit the, hit the gas pedal any chance you get and throw a caution to the win. It doesn't matter the score of this game. Rothstein was trying to get in and just blatantly stood up and checked it right there. And it's getting a little rough out there. You can hold your ground, but you can't lean in for a hit. McCaffrey picked that one off at the top of the slot. Couldn't get it to sit down. Centering feed, looking for McCaffrey, but it was about a couple of yards the nether. 8.51 left, period number three. Five nothing Junior Flyers. 26-17 the shots for the Junior Flyers. O'Toole gets underneath Kepler. She put herself in that position. Oddly, but probably trying to draw a penalty from the much taller player. Going underneath. Wow, that one almost picked off up the middle. But it does give McCaffrey some room one-on-one. -on -one. Takes a shot. It hit off the stick of Kogan. And the Junior Flyers break out. Bandits have had trouble breaking out. The Junior Flyers haven't had much. Muther looking for her third. Sends it wide. Played by... Riley, McCaffrey comes through to pick that one off. Venuto will send it off of the Junior Flyers player, Kogan, so no icing. Bandits will change. Rizzo and Otterbein head out there. Sperling still out. Sperling catches that one, moves it into the offensive zone. Venuto had it for a moment, but Campanile is going to get it. Campanile hounded by a couple. Gets through Olivia Rothstein. Campanile still with it, trying to shake off Otterbein, looking for a shot. Sent it wide, comes to the near side wall. Chandler sends it right back to you at home. Spiker tries to shake off Otterbein. Olivia Rothstein came through. Spiker got it back. Rizzo picked off. Shaw's attempted a fourth goal. Rizzo battles Shaw there. Shaw got it down low. Otterbein, Spiker gets through, gets a shot in. Rothstein on the knees. A stick goes flying, Riley's looking for it, and eventually it's poked out by McNulty. Rizzo's just gonna head north, see if McNulty could find her. May have tried to dump it in, but somebody got a piece of it behind her. Here comes Acosta, sends that one in. Gobbled up with the catching glove by Riley. And the time ticks down to 6.50 remaining in the third period. Five nothing junior flies. 28-17, the shots for Junior Flyers. And barring a goal a minute pace here, they're gonna be headed to Nationals. Something of the like has happened in an NHL playoff game, the miracle on Manchester, which is the street that the Forum in Los Angeles is on. And that's the former home of the LA Kings, who once had an incredibly shocking comeback in a game against the Edmonton Oilers about 40-something years ago. Camarada will fire that one wide, but the Bandits can't even worry about the miracle in Manchester until they get one goal and get the zero off the board. And they certainly don't want to give Sheldon the dignity of a shutout if they can possibly avoid it. Chandler will try to get all the way in, gets down low, backhander, save Riley and covers it up. Five fifty-seven remaining. Bandits get one more shot at it. Their win this morning earned them two shots to get one win. But if they don't win tomorrow, they go home for the season. And there's going to be a slash. Sperling got the stick slashed out of her hands. 5.48 remaining, period number three. 
or did they not call that? Let's see if they did. Yeah, Sanders goes off for the slash on Spurl. So the Bandits have an offensive zone draw. In the do or die game, do you say pull the goalie and try to go six on four? Probably it's still too far out of reach, but you'd like to get one without giving up another. Off the draw, they blow the whistle. See if they're going to kick somebody out of the circle. McSherry gets kicked out, so Sperling jumps in. Sperling on the dot, McCaffrey in the slot, McSherry on the far side wing, Shoemaker, Gromick, and Redmond at the points. The Flyers get it out of the zone. O'Toole gains the line, but loses it to Shoemaker, Gromick. There goes Logan looking for some room and gets the wheels moving. Perez tries to meet her in the middle. Shoemaker Gromick gets to the point, hits the brakes as the junior flyers trap there. And they've been pretty much the whole game as the bandits have been getting in. Sperling gets close, walks in, shoots it off the mask of Sheldon. Still 5-0. 5 13 left in the game, 123 on the power play. Shoemaker Gromick looking for some room, tries to get it through traffic. It does get through, but it gets wide of the net toward the point. McSherry's offering toward Redmond, didn't have enough on it. Junior Flyers will change, Bandits will send it forward, but Shoemaker Gromick couldn't connect with Sperling. Snedeker has it, we'll just try to pin it along the boards and Sperling will pick it up. Looking for some room, sends it forward for Redmond. Redmond finds Shoemaker Gromick in stride. Shoemaker Gromick Stretched out there a little bit. Bandits will change sort of behind the play. Now it comes to the near side. Wall, Sperling looking, still looking. Might go to the point or might not. Still looking, exchanges for Kepler. Kepler will walk it all the way in, take a shot, rebound, covered up by Sheldon, and the whistle blows to stop play with 4.15 remaining in the game. 5 nothing Junior Flyers. 29-19, the shots on goal for the Junior Flyers. Bandits will attack with Folia on the dot. Gabby Rothstein in the slot. Izzy Camerata with the puck there off the half boards. Takes a sharp angle shot. Sheldon got the glove on it, but didn't corral it. It comes loose, and Olivia Rothstein will skate right at you to get the puck, and she does. 14 seconds left in the power play. Gabby Rothstein gets that one, but two flyers there. Shaw with the natural hat trick to make it 5-0 in the second period. Battles for a moment in the corner. Penalty expires, 5-on-5. Five five. Kepler trying to race back. Acosta tries to turn the corner with it, looking, still looking. Swatted away by Folia. Gabby Rothstein trying to get off to the races now, couldn't get through. Sent down off Olivia Rothstein. Riley lets it go by. Kepler's gonna pick it up, try to spin around a couple and shake a couple off. Acosta and Folia battling for it. Acosta lunges forward into the boards on her own volition as she was trying to shake Folia off. Here's McNulty. Maeve McNulty trying to get it up the left wing, banks it off the boards for Folia as we tick down to three minutes left. The Junior Flyers are going to be headed to Nationals. The Bandits are going to get another shot at it on Sunday afternoon. Late Sunday afternoon, and we'll bring it to you. Hopefully it's not from this rink. The rink this morning, rink four, would be my preference. <laughs> Just anything but rink two, please. District. Whistle stops play. I think it's going to be another penalty here, a trip on the Junior Flyers. So the Bandits will get another shot with the power play. Maria DePiro off for the trip, number 77. Let's see if the Bandits with yet another power play here that just have not been very effective so far. Shoemaker Gromick was trying to get out there. Venuto will stay. Off the draw, it comes to Venuto. Looking, looking, takes a shot. Sticked away by Sheldon. Would have been ironic if. 
Venuto, who was going to be called off there, scored a goal, scored a goal. Venuto will sprint in from the point. Sperling will keep it behind the end line there. Tried to center it in front, did Venuto. Still with it now, Gabby Rothstein gets all the way down, tripped up in the middle, just, just blatantly got the skates pulled right out there, and no call. Camerata races back, fires it off the end boards. Mudardis is gonna try to race it down and gets there first. Camerata and Sanders battle for it. Now it comes to the middle, Folia smacked it away. Somebody lost the stick, Venuto but has plenty of time to pick it up. A minute left in the power play, but only 100 seconds left in the game here for the Bandits. They're gonna fall short here. And racing in. All right, that penalty right there. And it's gonna be a trip. Well, I don't have a 17 on my roster, so all that research and two different rosters. I haven't seen a 17 all year, but it's more. And the penalty will be on the Bandits. And the final 128 of a disappointing game will be spent in the box by Katie McCaffrey. Four on four for 45 seconds, and then a truncated power play at the end for the Junior Flock. Gromick wheels it around the board to the far side. This is four on four hockey. Five nothing Junior Flyers if you're just tuning in. And you're from the Junior Flyers side, it's a banner day because you're headed to East Lansing, Michigan. And if you're from the Bandit side, it's the good news and the bad news. The good news is you got to this game by winning the first game. And that earned you a second shot at a trip to Nationals which will come Sunday afternoon at 5.45 here on Rizzo Vision. Opponent to be determined Sunday morning based on the result of the game between the Little Flyers and the York Devils. The Little Flyers fell 5-1 to the York Devils on Friday night, and the Bandits beat the York Devils 2-0 earlier in the day. They're going to call an icing on this one. So four seconds remaining in the four on four, 47.7 seconds left in the game. Five, nothing Junior Flyers, 29-19 the shots in favor of the team in orange. Off the draw, Perez over to Chandler. Muther looking for the hat trick, couldn't get it through. Folia tries to slap it down, it hit the referee, rather the linesman it looked like. And the linesman wincing in pain. Luther leaves it for Davis, it's now a power play. 23 seconds left in the game for the Junior Flyers. Chandler keeps it in at the point. Sends it to Perez, wrist shot through traffic, loved by. Riley. Off the draw, Gabby Rothstein, Olivia Rothstein picks it up. Shield against the boards, Folia with a little love tap on Davis. That is going to expire it, and the Junior Flyers will head to Nationals, and the Bandits will get another shot at it on Sunday afternoon, 5.45 p.m. Eastern Time, scheduled face-off on Rizzo Vision against either the York Devils or the Little Flyers. The Little Flyers different from the Junior Flyers, so as not to be confused. Teams will shake hands at the center line here. Of course, the Junior Flyers, their mission accomplished, are taking a little extra time to celebrate as well they should. This is no small feat to get this far.
Two for Muther in the first period. Three for Shaw in the second period. That is your scoring summary. 31 shots for the Junior Flyers. 26 saves for Lexi Riley. A 19 save shutout for Veronica Shoulder. Teams line up at the center. We'll have some type of presentation here. And keep it here for another minute or two. So the Junior Flyers are being congratulated for earning the first berth, but there are two. And if you're getting there, you would love to have clinched it tonight, but you will gladly take what is offered tomorrow. It's close there. Announcing the players now. And Junior Flyers getting their caps and then each player going along and shaking hands with the opponent. The Bandits hope to be the one getting the caps in about 20 hours from now. Getting through to the end of the line here, and then that will be it. And we'll pack it up for the night. And we do it all tomorrow. There'll be a lot of either in-person watching or watching online during St. Patrick's Day. And the Bandits will hope that it is a lucky evening on March 17th as they take their second swing at a chance to punch their ticket to Nationals. The junior Flyers will get their first place banner. The Bandits will do the stick tap. In this case, you would absolutely love the first place banner, but you'll be even happier tomorrow to get the chance. And it's head off the ice, we will head off of the air. Once again, Junior Flyers punch their ticket to Nationals in the U19 AA Districts. And we'll be back for one more game. The Bandits don't win this one, but they live to fight another day. And hopefully they punch their ticket and get their celebration tomorrow. But for now, that will do it from Ice Line in Westchester, Pennsylvania. This is Joe Rizzo. Thanks for watching New Jersey Bandits Girls Hockey on Rizzo Vision.